god. Go too fast. Right, I'm going I'm taking three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel everyone, Thoughtgore here of course, and today we are going to take a look at two replays. The first one we're looking at is in Old Dog, and he's in his New Mexico today. And then to round off the video, keeping with the Battleship theme, uh, debatable, we'll still we'll, uh, switch over to a game I played in the uh, guys now. But anyway, over here in the New Mexico on New Dawn. Now, I have since played New Dawn uh, since the newest patch came out. New Dawn was one of those maps which received some visual improvements, which meant that when I first saw this map, uh, looking at the minimap, I had no idea what this was. <laughs> no, no idea, because it just looked uh, so different, right? Uh, so much sharp. Um, sharper. Anyway, uh, nice to see that they've done it, um, and you know, more of the maps continue to get these visual improvements, which is always great. Now, uh, speaking about other changes or new things coming in ships, uh, just while Old Dog is getting himself into position here, uh, we do notice, uh, or rather we would note, that um, the October preview has come up for the events in ships, which is fantastic. So we have several events coming out, um, most notably I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to Ranked Battles, which is actually going to be coming out today, October 1st. Um, last time I checked was, it said it was coming out in a few hours, so it's sometime today on October 1st it's going to be coming out, and we're going to get to play uh, some Ranked Battles, which is going to be good. Now, if you do recall, though, <laughs> with Ranked Battles and myself, it's, um, I usually do get, end up getting frustrated with it, because, um, if you recall from some of the other Ranked Battle videos I put out, it, you know, it just boils down to, uh, no longer is it, you know, about, uh, skill or anything like that, it's, you know, who did you randomly get on your team, <laughs> and do these people know what's going on, because <laughs> there's only so much one ship can do to carry, um, in in that setting, and it's not going to be enough to actually win victory. And I've you know we've seen it time and time again. But anyway, anyway, still looking forward to it. And of course, this season of ranked battles, uh, they're changing the tiering up a little. So it's just a matter. It's um, you know much more narrow. We have tier six and tier eight. Those are the two tiers uh, that you will be able to play in, t in uh, team battles. So or sorry, ranked battles. Which is great, I mean, I've got some great tier 6s, and I've got some great tier 8s, so no problem there for me anyway. Anyway, you can see on the map here, uh, Old Dog is getting himself into position. A uh, fairly classic move for a uh, battleship player here, uh, to go down here towards the south of the map, towards a sea cap, and, uh, you know, check things out, see what's going on, and start firing in on the enemies, who usually do come down here to the south. Uh, you know, basically the exact direction that we see the enemies grouped up now on the minimap. Which, yeah, works out well. Um, one of the new events they have coming up is a, an American Battleship event coming up later in October, which got me thinking. After seeing this replay, got me thinking, maybe I, you know, maybe it's time to finally start going up that uh, um, American Battleship line. Maybe it's finally time. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still sort of thinking about that one. I, I did, re you recall, talk about getting an aircraft carrier for probably about six months before I actually did it. <laughs> If if you want to put some sort of time frame on it. <laughs> anyway, we have an enemy conning here off in the distance. Uh, the conning is no slouch of a battleship. This is actually a pretty great battleship. But, um, you know, she's only tier 5. And the New Mexico is also a very, very good battleship sitting at tier 6. Um, so, uh, probably not going to go so well for the conning. And then there we go. We get a nice, uh, do a bit of, uh, sorry, get a nice chunk of damage dealt to the conning there. And we're able to take the player down, and so far, I mean, still basically opening uh, maneuvers here, and we're at about 25,000 damage, which isn't too bad. Now, the enemies do control both A and B, and, you know, this is kind of an issue, but again, you know, you really do want to keep in mind that it's still early in the game at this point in time, and take a look at the minimap. We do see that we do have allies who are to the south of B, so it's not like, you know, we've completely given up on B altogether. No, it's just a matter of people hopefully are going to be taking their time, recognizing opportunities, and then taking advantage of those opportunities, right? Maybe it's now is not the time to just charge into B. Uh, maybe, you know, it is more advantageous for our allies to just sort of sit 
sit back behind the islands. But we'll note now that, yeah, allies are actually in B, starting to cap it, so fantastic. There's another nice hit to the enemy uh, battleship. More damage being racked up now, which isn't too bad. I think, what was that, like 4,500, somewhere around there? So that's not too bad at all. <clears throat> the train of enemy battleships continues. <laughs> we can see uh, that we still have uh, a number of enemy battleships here off in the distance to deal with as well. All of them continuing their push towards the south. And it's you know not necessarily that this is a bad maneuver for the enemies. Um, it's just maybe it could have been a little more coordinated because on the you know. From the enemy point of view, while they have two caps and it would look as though our team is at a disadvantage, um, well, Old Dog's team is at a disadvantage because, you know, they, based on what the enemy knows, they would see that they probably are uh, grouped up down here in the south, right? That's probably what they're thinking, so push down here and destroy them all. Unfortunately for the enemies, what they don't realize is that it still is early in the game. Um, you know, doing a hard push like this right at the beginning might not be the best maneuver, especially when you already have two points like the enemies do does um, or do. I think it would be more beneficial maybe for the enemy to sort of regroup, regather themselves, and then make a coordinated push rather than this sort of uh, uncoordinated push down into uh, C here. In the meantime, the Allies continue to cap B, or at least contest B, which is fantastic. Old Dog just did another massive amount of damage there to that enemy battleship, which is fantastic. And you can see the damage numbers, uh, you know, gradually starting to rise here as well, which is great. Um, still basically heading around into the south of the map, right? We're still down here at sea. And, you know, one of my biggest criticisms of the, the American battleships is obviously the speed. I just, I just can't stand the speed. It makes me angry. Um, but it's really not such an issue in, in this sort of setting here. With the enemies continuing, or at least you do see the enemies are now turning around and going back to the north. But for this, you know, the opening moves here in the, in the first, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of the battle, um, the enemy was coming at Old Dog, so speed necess wasn't necessarily even a factor at that point in time. Uh, the range of the New Mexico isn't too bad at all, I mean it still is usable, especially on a map like this, where you know New Dawn is a smaller map. On a larger map I think it's more of an issue, you do obviously get the spotter plane as well to help out with that. Um, we did a massive amount of damage there to that enemy battleship, I think it was about 11,000 damage in that one salvo, so that's not too bad, and we're sitting on about 57,000 damage at this point in time. So, yeah, doing pretty decently as well. The enemies are down three ships. We are only down two. Um, and the enemies only have two destroyers remaining versus our three. So this is also very beneficial because destroyers are sneaky, sneaky little ships. And you do really want to watch out for them. So you can see the enemy conning, I, well, I believe it's the enemy conning, has pushed into B. Torpedoes come in, take the player out. Don't have to worry about this battleship anymore. The other enemy battleships who were pushing towards the south down here towards C, you can see that, you know, they did turn back, but it really looks like they just sort of opened up the distance. And so Old Dog here is going to get himself into position to start strafing these guys and start doing some more damage as well. Our team has now taken B, so this is great. Um, you know, if you recall, it wasn't just an all-out push into B to try and get it back as quickly as possible or to deny it from the enemy. It was more of a coordinated slow push in there, um, you know, trying to mitigate any damage and making sure that, uh, you know, it's not a trap. Which is really, really important. More damage done to another enemy conning, I believe, 7400 damage in that salvo, so that is not too bad at all either that's pretty decent um, and this enemy conning is presenting a nice broadside towards us right now as well so fantastic we do see as well on the mini map that there are some other enemy ships in and around this enemy conning it's just most of those ships you know are all just on the breach of our range at this point in time or just on the cusp of our range <laughs> cusp is a better word <laughs> Um, but anyway, enemy conning does turn away from uh, old dog here. It still didn't do, uh, you know, still wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, old dog did manage, I think it was about 6,400 in that salvo as well. So still decent amount of damage dealt. Um, and it really does, again, speak to the New Mexico, right? The New Mexico is a pretty, pretty great battleship. Uh, not too bad at all. And at tier 6... Uh, well, we do have the War Spite, which the War Spite is probably the most armored, and then the New Mexico is probably a close second. 
Because the Congo and the Dunkirk, right? Yeah, they don't really have too much armor. <laughs> or not the Congo, the Fuso, I apologize. <laughs> not too much armor. And we'll, we'll, we'll see that. We'll see that uh, as the, uh, the video comes to an end. More damage dealt to the American battleship there. And it, almost dead, right? One more salvo, basically. And we should be able to get this player down. And if anyone has been keeping track, uh, we have been dealing damage to a number of enemy ships. So there may be a Confederate medal coming up here for us shortly which would not be too bad at all the you know any sort of medal uh, that awards you flags is always beneficial it's always nice to have a you know pretty decent stock of flags just sort of sitting around so you can use them I've been using my dragon flags a lot actually there we go we managed to get our first kill in the game sitting on about 79,000 damage at this point in time so that is not too bad at all uh, we continue to you know gradually increase on our damage and in the meantime we haven't been taking very much damage ourselves which is quite surprising Usually the, the battleships do soak up a lot of damage, but whatever, this is fantastic. <laughs> we, we don't have too many concerns at this point in time. Um, so taking a look around and see what else we have. We do have the enemy um, Konigsberg, I'll say, um, coming in, right? So we are going to want to deal with this player here as well. I mean, rapid fire cannons could easily start um, you know, doing a bunch of damage to us in terms of armor piercing and or high explosive and fires. Uh, and on top of that, we do see the player has torpedoes. So, you know, those torpedoes could come in and just destroy us. Maybe it's an enemy Nurem I don't know. <laughs> it's too blurry. I can't tell. Whatever. <laughs> German cruiser. Um, but still, yeah, we do want to watch out for this player. I mean, obviously, again, the torpedoes could come in and take us out. Uh, we do have an enemy Mitsuki in front of us as well, so this is important. The Mitsuki did launch torpedoes, 10-kilometer uh, torpedoes, so we should be, you know, have a pretty decent time in trying to avoid those. This bloody German cruiser, though, <clears throat> we got some shots off from the player, didn't manage to finish them off. Uh, damn over penetrations right the the hull is just so weak and there again more over penetrations but whatever we did get ourselves a nice confederate medal you can see that the uh, enemy cruiser is in a bad way right and there's one of our allies are act is actively shooting in on the player as well so hopefully that player will go down we eat one torpedo there from the enemy mitsuki but managed to dodge a second torpedo fairly close but still managed to dodge it and more importantly we didn't actually take any flooding damage and I believe that this is attributed to the fact that the torpedo hit us um, more or less straight on right and wasn't a full-on sh uh, shot to the broadside there which maybe attributes to that I'm, I'm not 100% sure <laughs> We see more enemy ships in front of us, and as well, B is being contested. So we know that there's an enemy in B here somewhere. Most likely an enemy destroyer, and actually we do see on the minimap that that player has popped up as well, so keep this player in mind. Now we're going to try and start working over some of these enemy uh, ships over here that are just remaining. Uh, we do have the enemy aircraft carrier in sight as well, um, but we are pretty close to this enemy battleship. So we're going to want to deal with this player here, hopefully, um, and get ourselves into a position so that we can easily defend B because that's really what you want to do at this point in time, right? We push the enemy out of the two zones. If we can just defend B, until victory, you know, that that would be pretty decent. We see an enemy Fuzo in the background. We do want to be careful of the enemy Fuzo. The enemy Fuzo is capable of dishing out a great deal, a uh, great you know, large number of damage, so we want to be careful about this. We fire off a uh, salvo of high explosive onto the enemy Koning there. Um, yeah, set him on fire, but the enemy Koning puts it out right away. And um, sort of continue to move, maneuver here to try and get ourselves into a better position to take this player down, right? From bow on, um, the conning is, is pretty fam uh, formidable. You could probably still rack up a bit of damage with your armor piercing, um, but definitely from the side with the New Mexico, uh, you know, and the shotgun-like characteristics at close range, you can just delete people. So we send in another salvo of high explosive, and unfortunately that salvo didn't do a whole lot at all, but we are loading up our armor piercing now. Our allies were all over that and managed to finish off that enemy battleship, so fantastic. Um, well, we're, you know, over 90,000 damage at this point in time as well so not too shabby and um, victory does look pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty much in our reach at this point in time we have the enemy Fuzo over here as well and and we'll see shortly what I was talking about in terms uh, well probably not a surprise to anyone but the Fuzo you know doesn't have that much armor um, it's a the Fuzo was a battleship 
but she keep in mind that she was a Congo and the Congo was originally a battle cruiser conversion. So they're trying to mount as much armor as possible onto them, obviously, um, which actually I was reading about from uh, some of your comments, uh, the subscriber comments that you've left. Some of you guys have left some fan fantastic comments on the channel uh well everyone does uh but just you know really filled with a whole lot of information which is pretty fantastic anyway we managed to get two citadels on the fuso finish off the fuso and get ourselves a nice high caliber sitting at 125,000 damage now excellent the enemies are capping b but eh, is it really that big of a deal not really, no. Um, I mean, we are going to come around the headland here. We know that there's more enemy ships on the other side, so if we can just, you know, maybe continue to uh, pummel away at some of these enemies, we might even win it on points here as well uh, and not have to worry about the cap zones altogether. Um, so, yeah, we're doing pretty good, doing pretty good here. We launch off our uh, scout plane to increase our range here just to see if we can't get some shots off on the enemy off in the distance. Um, we've almost got victory now. We can see as well one of our destroyers is an A capping that, which is great. We see an enemy destroyer pop up here on very low health. And with the points where they are, maybe if we just kill this player, we might actually get victory. So there we go. We kill the player and victory is ours. Fantastic. So 188,000 credits earned. We have 125,000 damage dealt with the two citadels, uh, the Confederate and the high caliber, which is not too bad at all. Top of the team overall. Um, and we can see that on the enemy team, it was the Budyani uh, that was on top of the team. That player was probably running back and forth in between caps. <laughs> we can see how the damage has broken down, obviously resulting in the Confederate medal, right? Because the damage is pretty well spread out amongst the enemies. 132,000 credits is what we end up earning with the uh, premium, or standard account as well, which is yeah, still pretty decent. So moving into the next clip, you can see we are on Tears of the Desert, and we're grouped up with Salazar today as well. Now on the other side of the team, or other, or sorry, on the enemy team, we'll notice as well bad karma and invert. So we were doing, um, I think actually we had like four divisions that were dropping at the same time, um, and it just so happened that the two of us, uh, our two divisions, got in the same battle on the enemy side. Now I'm in the guys now today, but I haven't really taking too much of a look in the guys now and I'm I'm really just sort of gathering other videos uh, for the guys now just to take a look at them all to find one that's gonna sum up the guys now <laughs> because I actually do I do enjoy her I think she's uh, you know a pretty decent battleship at tier 7 uh, overall I would still take a Nagato any day over the guys now if you know like for example if ranked battles still had uh, tier 7's in it, and um, it came down to what Tier 7 didn't want to play, and if I were to take a battleship, I'd still take the Nagato over the guys now. I think the Nagato just has more hitting power. But what the guys now does have going for her is speed, maneuverability, and secondary armament. The secondary armament on the guys now is pretty decent. Obviously, no Bismarck. Not going to compare to the Bismarck, but it's still pretty decent at tier 7. It's not too bad at all. The Nagato, as we know as well, has some pretty decent secondary as well. So on par there. Now where the, the guys now does let you down, it, everyone knows it or a lot of people know it. <laughs> and if you don't know what you're about to, is the dispersion. The dispersion on the guys now seems to have um, a mind of its own. It doesn't even seem to conform to RNG. <laughs> it's just... It just seems to be that wonky. Um, you know, you've got your other ships that uh, you can just say, well, RNG, you know, my RNG is just terrible right now, and that's why I'm not hitting uh, the good shots, or I'm not getting the, you know, the good shots. My shots are going in, hitting the target, uh, getting over pens, bounces, but it's just not doing a whole lot, right? But the guys now, it's uh, more of a case of my shots just aren't hitting at all. <laughs> just not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's something else, but I, I do still enjoy her, and, and it speaks to, you know, my type of gameplay in that I value speed maneuverability, and I've got that on the guys now. At the end of the day, if I need to, I've got torpedoes as well that'll uh, have a range of six kilometers, and my secondary battery as well if, you know, uh, shit really hits the fan. 
But anyway, we're playing on Epicenter here, so we do want to try and uh, stay within the concentric circles here, the three different zones, to make sure that we can uh, block the cap from the enemy and be in a good position to take down some enemies quickly, at least that's the idea. Keep in mind we have Invert and Bad Karma on the enemy team, who are no slouches at all, so we do want to keep these players in mind. This sort of battle, though, the epicenter battle type, does lend itself to the guys now. And the reason for this is that most of the time on this on this game mode, the ranges of engagement are going to be a little closer than what they would be normally, right? In a normal, maybe even domination uh, battle. Because in domination, you always have those opening moves where people are exchanging salvos at the beginning from max, uh, max range, max to mid range, and as people get closer, the ranges drop down. In epicenter, the ranges really start out at mid-range. Um, I mean, well, we can see enemies off in the distance that are well over 20 kilometers away, but, <laughs> um, you know, where the way that the circles are, that once the enemies gets inside that first zone, they are just on the, the, the cusp again, yes, of uh, mid-range, right? They're, they're coming into mid-range, and as we move closer into the center, uh, you're getting closer and closer in, so it lends itself to guys now, because... Typically, oh, I use typically sparingly with the guys now. If um, if you, like the range is really really close, you can pretty much count in your guns to hit it. It's not going to happen all the time though. Need to throw that one out there as well because I have definitely missed targets that were like five kilometers away. <laughs> all guns miss. In fact, my secondaries are more accurate at that range than the main guns. But whatever, whatever. <laughs> We have managed to take the center of the map, which is pretty decent. Um, I guess it's not a time for the enemies to be freaking out. Uh, something you do need to keep in mind, and something that I forgot recently as well on this map, where it's like, oh god, the enemies have a, have the center, and I was in my Fuzo, push right in, right in all by myself, and just die. I played a bit of a role in that one too, though, because I did push in, freak out, ground myself, and then die. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Circling around because, uh, again, we, we have the enemies blocked right now. Right now, we're just we're, both sides are just trying to get themselves into better firing position, while at the same time trying to make sure that they're not too vulnerable to enemy attack. We have this enemy Baltimore off the distance in reverse. Not sure what the player is doing. Um, yeah, you can see, I mean, my shots are going in. I was very surprised that those shots actually hit the Baltimore, and the dispersion on them seemed to be pretty good, so that's pretty great. But hopefully one of my allies will be there to mm, punish the Baltimore a little. <laughs> we have another enemy um, battleship off in the distance here, so we're going to try and do something about this player, at least maybe get a little more damage dealt. Um, and you can see for the most part I have just been strafing back and forth back here um, in between the first and second cap zone, depending on where I'm, I'm, you know, more or less needed. Um, the enemies have begun capping the center, but you can see that because we're firing in on the enemy battleship, that just keeps getting uh, reset, which is great, and hopefully we can just push the enemy battleship just completely out of the center, um, and we won't have to worry about that player at least. Right now, it's really more a situation of uh, the enemy destroyers, right? Clearly, there's probably an enemy destroyer somewhere in that center cap that we may want to have to uh, may want to deal with. Uh, we see an enemy Bismarck off in the distance in reverse. So okay, I'm just gonna send off some shots for that player. See how that goes. Um, and then I'm gonna turn right, try and keep bow on. Shots miss, um, but at the same time as well, I do want to make use of any cover that I have. And you'll notice that I do have two islands to choose from on the port and starboard side of the ship. Uh, so this is good. I can at least count on those islands to cover me, um, especially now considering I'm making a turn to the port. I'm essentially going to turn around, get myself into cover. Or am I? No, 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 no. I am in a reverse. Yes. That's what I'm doing. Um, with the islands on either side of me, on, on the port and starboard side of me, uh, you know, no shots can come in from uh, from the flank, so I can just kind of reverse in the channel here. We can see shots coming in from someone. Aim isn't too great, though, so I, I don't necessarily have to worry about it. And I haven't really taken any damage at all this game so far, so eh, even if I do get set on fire, I end up taking a bit of damage. Not too big of a deal. The biggest thing I'm worried about are 
uh, enemy torpedoes. I do not know where uh, those torpedoes could come in from, so I do want to try and watch out for them. We can see an enemy um, destroyer over there, so okay, this is interesting. May want to keep that player in mind. Salazar, in the meantime, is basically been doing the same thing that I have been doing, just in a Kiev. Uh, Kiev, obviously, fantastic destroyer. Um, and just strafing the enemies, going up and down the line, uh, you know, getting shots off where he can, breaking, uh, breaking contact where he can as well. And it's really been paying off for both of us by doing this, because we can see the enemies are already down three ships, where we're only down the one. We see an enemy, uh, an enemy destroyer there off in the distance. Torpedoes are coming in through the channel, but they run out of range, which is great. I got a target the enemy dive bombers who are coming in right now hopefully throw them off we do have enemy torpedo bombers as well coming in so full-on air attack here plus uh, the enemy destroyer now I didn't get too many shots off on that enemy destroyer but what I did manage to do is get a bunch of citadel shots Salazar comes in here to try and smoke me up it's just a little too late I eat a number of torpedoes but I am alive <laughs> managed to repair all of the flooding and instantly heal Fantastic. And because I have Salazar's smoke to hide in right now, I don't have to worry about any sort of incoming fire. I can pretty much get myself out of the area and behind another island to, for cover. So, I mean, it, it wasn't the most ideal situation considering the number of torpedoes I took. However, it was incredibly lucky and good timing on Salazar's part there. It worked out really well to come in, get the smoke, cover me while I was repairing and healing, and get myself into cover behind another island where the enemies hopefully won't expect me. So, excellent. So we can see Salazar has, uh, you know, pushed beyond the little island over there and is duking it out right now with uh, the enemy um, Kiev. So we are going to try and get ourselves over there to help Salazar out because I do have, again, pretty decent secondary battery on the guys now here. So if I can get over there and maybe um, take out one of those enemy destroyers, that might help Salazar out. But Salazar doesn't need the help, does he? <laughs> We can see that he just managed to get himself a uh, devastating strike, double strike, and another devastating strike. So what happened there? And uh, actually Salazar sent in the replay, so I'll get a clip of that out uh, as well. Um, but what happened there was Salazar launched off his torpedoes at one enemy destroyer in the smoke. Torpedoes went in, took the enemy destroyer out. Turns out there was another enemy lurking in the smoke there as well. Torpedoes went in and took that enemy out. <laughs> Which was not, not too bad at all, and excellent timing. Now the enemies don't have any destroyers remaining, um, and they are in fact down six ships to our three, so fantastic. We're working in on the middle once again, starting to cap that. We continue to block the third zone, but the enemies do hold that second zone, so I'm going to try and get myself now into the second zone here, block the cap on this, and deny the enemies from gaining points on it. Um, the enemies don't have the lead in points, at this time, but it is because uh, the enemy ships, uh, because we've sunk, you know, a few enemy ships. We have some shots going out for the uh, Tier 9 German battleship, and Tier 9 German battleship is on pretty low health, so hopefully that'll finish the player off. There he goes, player is gone. Fantastic. Don't need to worry about that battleship anymore. We do see the enemy Baltimore once again off the distance. That player has managed to keep himself alive, which is interesting, <laughs> but okay, all right. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, Salazar is right in the middle there, uh, duking it out once again, capping the middle as well. I've worked my way into the second zone. You can see that I am now capping the second zone as well. So the enemies have pretty much retreated from uh, zone one and two, and they're now working uh, their way into the outer zone, the uh, the third zone there, and um, even beyond that, right? We we basically kind of pushing them out of uh, the, the <laughs> pushing them out of the the whole epicenter and uh, to the edge of the map, which is fantastic. This is this is what we want. Uh, so things are going fairly decently for us here right now. Uh, slowing my ship down, right, because I didn't want to sail out of the zone. I wanted to be able to stay in the zone here and just finish the cap. Once the cap is finished, then I'll push up. Once again, Salazar is right on the ball with the smoke. He has launched uh, some smoke here off in front of me, so again, I'm covered from the enemy battleship. Salazar is also able to break contact himself with the enemies, so it was a mutually beneficial smoke there. Now, as well, the option prevent, uh, presents itself to me because the smoke is, uh, you know, basically in a line here I could get into the smoke and start sailing forwards and reverse and firing it on the enemies without being seen 
However, at this point in time in the battle, I don't necessarily uh, want to do it. It's going to take time to get in that in, into that position and whatnot. And plus, if we take a look at the remaining enemies, we're just not in a you know they're just not in a position where that would be advantageous for me to do. Instead, uh, maybe we'll try and chase these people down. So we have an enemy Sharn horse off in the distance. We fire off some shots at that player. We do see um, some other enemy ships off in the distance as well. I think one of them is Invert. Invert is in the York, and uh, he's still alive. So so we got to keep an eye out for Invert here. Once we see him, maybe try and do something about him. But for now, I'm, I'm more concerned about this enemy battleship right here. <clears throat> Uh, I believe it's a Sharn Horse, um, and you know, the Sharn Horse is obviously a pretty deadly battleship at tier 7. Um, the biggest thing with the Sharn Horse, at least why I would consider her so deadly, um, is that, you know, she can fire high explosive pretty quickly, and uh, <laughs> you can get set on fire and do a bunch of damage with that very, very quickly. Uh, and if the Sharn Horse is part of a group who's fo focusing down a number of enemy ships, yeah, you will soon soon uh, hate the shard horse <laughs> so we're gonna put in as much fire as i possibly can into this player here try and get the player gone if at all possible um and you can see right now the guys now is pretty much playing ball now this is another thing that i like about the guys now when the shots do hit and do do damage it is a significant amount of damage typically very very awesome <laughs> in fact the Sharnhorst uh, or not the Sharnhorst and the guys now is able to sit at all the Sharnhorst from the bow of the Sharnhorst uh, with this guys now now that is you know total luck I wasn't aiming for it at all or anything like that but still the the guys now is definitely capable of pulling off some pretty decent shots when you least expect uh, expect it enemy players are down to two ships we can see the Baltimore just went down uh, the enemies have their aircraft carrier and inverts we see invert off in the distance here um, and we're still in this uh, well, no actually we're capping the third outer zone now which is fantastic um, and we're gonna line up an invert here now sorry invert we sent some shots out and I didn't really expect them to do a whole lot but we're looking at them oh, they're looking pretty good invert sail in a straight line shots go in ooh <laughs> There we go. Victory is ours. Battle is over. And what a game that was. Um, Salazar and I really did some, uh, some fine work there just maneuvering around and I do find that a battleship working in conjunction with a destroyer is pretty much a dead combo or a deadly combo especially if the battleship and destroyer has a cruiser in the background supporting them third overall in the team Salazar finishes first overall in the team with well over uh, 2000 base experience so fantastic game for Salazar there um, and not too shabby for myself as well um, wasn't too bad we can see here as well how the damage breaks down once I click on it of course um, wasn't too bad in terms of damage I forget what it was uh, I can't remember oh 59,000 there it is uh, 59,000 damage pretty typical in the guys now but it can definitely have more uh, when all is said and done 138,000 credits uh, earned and I got myself another commander skill point which is fantastic uh, curious to know as well what uh, everyone's thoughts are on the new um, maintenance fees the standardized maintenance fees I uh, for the most part I'm liking it myself for the most part I'm liking it anyway anyway that is today's video I do hope you guys enjoyed it uh, remember to leave any comments you have for me in the video comment section below love reading those and responding back to them remember to hit the old like button if you did like today's video hit subscribe if you are not a subscriber and as always I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day